Elements involving infinity. So this is kind of what we were just doing. We were like kind of logicking through the problem. Logicking, is that even a word? I don't know. So we were going through and we were saying, okay, the numerator is small, the denominator is big, so it goes to zero. So these are going to be very similar. So whenever we involve infinity, these are going to involve horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Do we feel pretty comfortable with horizontal and vertical asymptotes? So very quickly on number one, determine all vertical asymptotes of the function. What's the vertical, what's this one's vertical asymptote? Oh, you guys should know this right away. Vertical asymptote set it equal to zero, right? The denominator equal to zero. How about the next one? Three and negative three. And this one we rewrite as sine over cosine. So if I'm trying to find when cosine is equal to zero, it's at pi over two, three pi over two, and so on. So in pre-calc, we had you guys write this as pi over two plus pi k where k is an integer. You can write where k is an integer, you can leave it off. Only if you just reuse this notation would you have to say what k is Yeah. Function. You could also do k is an element of z, remember that? Fancy z. All right, so number two, so finding vertical asymptotes. Sometimes when you factor the denominator and also the numerator, you don't get a vertical asymptote, you get a whole. Okay, so let's kind of sketch a rough graph. If you guys know how to sketch a graph, you will be totally fine on all of the homework questions, okay? So if I'm sketching, I'm going to factor the numerator and the denominator. So when I do that, I have x plus 3 and x minus 3 on the bottom. And then I'm going to have x minus 3 and x plus 4 on the top. So your x minus 3s go away, so it means that there is a hole at x equals 3. How about the vertical asymptote? What's it? Negative 3. Mm -hmm. So x equals negative 3. How about a horizontal asymptote? Do you remember the trick for that? Yeah, it's 1. So we look for a largest degree in both the numerator and denominator. It's x to the first. So we have 1x over 1x, which is 1. So we have y equals 1. So if I was sketching a graph, at negative 3, I have a vertical asymptote. At 1, I have a horizontal asymptote. And then what we typically did in Algebra 2 is if you still weren't sure of the shape once you had those, we just did a quick t-table. And we plugged in numbers that were on the left and the right of the vertical asymptote. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a really quick t-table. And we're going to plug in a number on the left of the vertical asymptote, so negative 4, and a number on the right, negative 2. I don't know why I'm putting it there. So when you plug in negative 4 to the simplified version, right, this x plus 4 over x plus 3, what do we get when we plug it in? 0. Zero. Mm -hmm. How about when I plug in a negative 2? I get 2 over 1, so 2. So we have negative 4 comma 0 and we have negative 2 comma 2. Those points are enough to know exactly what the shape is. Do you guys remember? So we go along the horizontal, along the vertical, along the vertical, along the horizontal, like that. And then we know that there's a hole at 3. So I could ask you all kinds of questions about this function. I could say, what's the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right side? So from the right side, you would go up to, does that make sense? From the left, down to negative infinity. What if I said limit as x goes to 3? There's a hole there at x equals 3, but what's the limit as you get closer and closer to 3? Any guesses? What do you think? How'd you get 1? It's close to 1, yeah. 1 isn't the horizontal asymptote. It's not. It's 1 as you go to infinity. So if I say the limit as x goes to infinity, as I go really far off to the right side, it gets closer and closer to 1. No, but you're close. So if I plug in 3 into the simplified version, what happens when you plug in 3 into the simplified version? 7 over 6, right? So that means that this hole is really at 3 comma 7 over 6. So the limit is actually 7 over 6. Do you see it? So I could ask lots of questions. If you have the graph, you can answer tons of questions about it. All right, so the next one says find the limits using a graphing calculator. So I think I already graphed this for you. Let me see if it's still up here. All right, so I went to y equals, 
Well, it's not letting me click on it, but that's the graph. So it's not letting me click on it, but uh, notice how we don't have a horizontal asymptote. We only have a vertical asymptote. Where's the vertical asymptote? Look at your problem. Four. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember how to find the slant asymptote? The slant is with long division. I made a reference to that earlier, didn't I? Or, in this case, could you use synthetic division? Look at the denominator. Yeah, it's x minus 4, right? So couldn't we do 4? And we could do 1x squared plus 0x, no wait, not plus 0x, minus 9, right? 1x squared minus 9 plus 0. So 1x squared minus 9x plus 0. And we drop the 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Add straight down, I get negative 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Add straight down, I get negative 20. But if you remember, when we did the long division stuff, it wasn't the remainder that mattered. It was the part that was right here. Okay, so our slant asymptote ends up being y equals x minus 5. It comes from right there. So our slant asymptote is y equals x minus 5. And you can see that on the graph. It's right here. All right. So we want to know what the limit as I get closer and closer to 4 from the right and the left. So our vertical asymptote is at 4. So as I come from the right and I'm tracing along the curve, where am I getting closer and closer to? Negative infinity. And then from the left, infinity, right? So I didn't really need to do the slant asymptote thing, but you need to do it in your homework. So I figured I'd just kill two birds with one stone there. All right, so as I go from the right, it went to negative infinity. As I go from the left, it went towards infinity. Okay, and that was because it looked like this. All right, so horizontal asymptotes, remember there's a shortcut. Um, in calculus, we're not just going to have one horizontal asymptote like we did in like Algebra 2. Um, we're, we could have more than one. So whenever you see a problem in calculus that says find the horizontal asymptote or mentions a horizontal asymptote, you always want to consider from both positive and negative infinity what's happening on the far right and what's happening on the far left. We called that end behavior in Algebra 2. So we said as x goes to infinity, where does y go? y goes up to infinity or down to negative infinity? Well, now it can go to a number, okay? So there's a shortcut. I'm going to very quickly show you the long way. You don't have to write it. It's fine. It's good to know in general. So if you're doing this the long way, what we do is we look for our largest degree, which is x cubed. So still pay attention, even if you're not writing. So we do the limit as x goes to infinity, and we divide every single term by x cubed. This is where the shortcut comes from. It's a lot of writing, isn't it? Dividing everything by x cubed. So we simplify this. And we say, oh, x cubed over x cubed is 1. 8x over x cubed is 8 over x squared. Then I have 2 minus 1 over x plus 7 over x cubed. OK, Louie, are you with me? And then we use the limit laws. And we bring the limit into the numerator. We bring the limit into the denominator. OK, so every single one of these terms is going to have a limit with it. So the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 is just 1. Or x goes to 1, what am I saying? Limit as x goes to infinity of 1 is 1. If I have the limit as x goes to infinity of 8 over x squared, what does that become as I plug in really, really huge numbers? Where does it go closer and closer to? Zero, right? That goes away. Do you guys see 8 over 18 trillion squared? Right. <laughs> and then this goes to 0, and this goes to 0. Do you see? That is why in the shortcut method we only worry about the largest degree, because when we end up dividing by the largest degree everywhere, those other terms are insignificant. They no longer matter, because they were so little compared to the other thing. So even in this, in this example here, like if I had, like I said, 18 trillion and I cubed it, that's a really huge number, right? 18 trillion cubed. Adding in 8 times 18 trillion, it doesn't matter. That's not anywhere close to the other number. I know that seems weird to you. Do you guys kind of understand that? 
All right, um, so the shortcut, like we said before, is you look for your largest degree. So our largest degree is x cubed. So I do a 1x cubed over 2x cubed, and I just say, oh, it's 1 half, just like the answer to that one. It was 1 half. So we have y equals 1 half as the horizontal asymptote. All right, but it does get a little bit more complicated because when we talked about horizontal asymptotes before, what did I say for things like number two? It was like x cubed over, or not x cubed, x squared over 0 x squared. And all we said before was that there was no horizontal asymptote. Was that why? Do you see that? No, that's true. There is no horizontal asymptote. So what it means graphically when there's no horizontal asymptote is that on the end, it's either going up or it's going down. It's not going horizontal, right? Does that make sense? So we now need to figure out what is happening to it. Because it's not asking. It's saying, what is the limit? We want to know if it's infinity or negative infinity. So in order to find what it is, so what is it? Is it infinity? Is it negative infinity? We don't know. So we look at our largest degree in both locations. So in the numerator, what is the largest degree? X squared. X squared. In the denominator, what is our largest degree? X. X. So we put a negative X there, right? That simplifies down to negative X if you reduce it out, right? So we're, we're approximating this, this function with this. So if I just had negative x and I took the limit of negative x, what would you get? Positive or negative infinity? Negative infinity, Ethan's right. Negative infinity, because you're plugging it into negative x, right? So all of this goes to negative infinity. The original goes to negative infinity. So you want to simplify, it's kind of like, you're not simplifying the function, you're like, Finding an approximation for it. So this next one, do you see there's no horizontal? Yeah, Ethan, do you have a question? So if there's a negative on either the top or the bottom, then, then it's uh, the opposite of what you think, yeah. It makes it a negative, yeah. So on this one, um, so we know that there's no horizontal. Can you guys quickly see that in your head? x squared over 0x squared? All right, so we want to decide if it goes to infinity or negative infinity. All right, so we look for our largest degree. So we approximate this by looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Of, we ignore everything else. So we have x squared over 4x. So we have x over 4. What do we get? Negative infinity. Because now we're starting at negative infinity. <laughs> I know. Got to be careful. All right. So yeah, we get negative infinity. Do you see how this works? Because we were taking the limit as x went to negative infinity this time, not infinity. So if, it, if the limit is of a positive, you keep the sign to the negative expression. Like, it was a limit of negative x, x to infinity, you made that negative. Yeah, but you've got to think about whether your infinity, like, are we going on the right side of the graph or are we going on the left side of the graph? Are you plugging in big positive numbers or plugging in big negative numbers? That's what we're doing. All right, so do you remember doing the ones like this, where we had the square root? So all we're going to do is we're going to first approximate the function. We're going to worry, not worry about the plus 1 or the minus 5. They're gone. We don't worry about them. So if I have the square root of 2x squared, do you guys remember the square root of x squared? What is it? Absolute value of x, right? So the square root of 2x squared is going to be the square root of 2 times the absolute value of x. And the bottom is just going to be 3x. So first, write what it's been simplified to, or approximated by, I guess I should say. And now you do both the limit as x goes to infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So now imagine plugging in a big positive and a big negative. And you can even just think about, like, 100. So if you plug in a big positive number, what's your result? Remember send you now? No. Nope. nope, because this is actually kind of an x to the first as well, like because it's under square root. Yeah, Ian? Root 2 over 3. Yep, it's root 2 over 3. So imagine plugging in 100 here and here. The 100 and 100 will cancel, right? What if I plug in a negative 100? 
Well, the top is positive 100. The bottom is negative 100. So when they cancel, you have a negative 1 still. So you get negative root 2 over 3. So it's one where you have two horizontal asymptotes. So it just means so this one would be approximated by 5x over 3 absolute value of x. So the limit as x goes to infinity for f of x, and the limit as x goes to negative infinity, find both of them. What's the x goes to infinity? 5 thirds, yep. What's x goes to negative infinity? Negative 5 thirds, you got it. So see if you can do the next one. So be careful. Did you guys put a negative x on the bottom? Yep, good. So the limit as x goes to infinity, what'd you put? Negative 2, yep. Pos uh, negative infinity? Two. Two, positive 2, good. Good question. No, <laughs> just like rest your... <laughs> Alright, so the next one is not one of those. It's not one that has 2. Well, maybe. We'll see. So do we recognize that there is no horizontal asymptote? Right, there's no horizontal asymptote. All right, so we still want to know what happens as I go to the right and the left of the graph. I want to know if my ends are going up, if they're both going down, if one's going up and one's going down, just like an algebra 2. We wanted to know what the shape of the graph was in the end. So we're still going to do the limit thing. So let's approximate and say, oh, well, I'm just going to worry about my big powers. So if I had negative 2x to the fifth over x to the fourth, that makes negative 2x. So when I talk about the limit as x goes to infinity and negative infinity of my function, I'm going to use that simplified version to find what it goes to. So if I have negative 2 times a positive infinity, I get negative infinity. But if I do a negative 2 times a negative big huge number, negative infinity, I get a positive infinity. Do those all make sense? You get it? Okay, so what it's saying is that on this graph on the right, so as x goes to the right, I go down, and as x goes to the left, I go up. So that's what's happening on the end of the graph. Okay? All right. So it's kind of important to know, like, parent functions. So I, I'm guessing that you guys know what 1 over x looks like. Can you guys show me with your hands what 1 over x looks like? Like this and like this. So here and here, right? Do you guys know what 1 over x squared looks like? Anybody know? What'd you do? Uh -uh. You think it's very real? <laughs> I don't know if Kyle's doing it or not. I just see a lot of it. It's like he's doing a little dance back there. <laughs> nope. It looks like this. All right, so think about it. If you plug in like a 1 and a negative 1, don't you get the same thing? You get 1. What if you plug in a 2 and a negative 2? You get 1 fourth on each of them, right? 3 and negative 3, 1 ninth. So they're getting closer to the x-axis as you go out. But yeah, it looks like that. So what do you think the limit as x goes to 0 would be? It is. It's infinity, yeah. All right, now the tricky part about the AP test is that sometimes they write does not exist as an answer. And that is also true. Isn't that annoying? Because infinity is actually, it's not actually a limit. Limits have to be like bounded. You gotta be able to like draw a circle around the number that you're gonna get closer and closer to. It's kind of weird, you can't draw a circle around infinity, right? Um, so to indicate this type of behavior, we say that it equals infinity. So that means from both the right and the left, we go up. Um, but since both the right hand left hand limits are the same, we can say the limit goes to infinity, but however, since the limit is still unbounded, it still does not exist. So your AP test might have like a multiple choice and it might say one of those things. So it might say does not exist. It might say infinity. I personally like infinity. I feel like it's more specific. That tells me that both from the right and left, it goes up. Okay? So if we ever see infinity, if we ever get infinity or negative infinity on multiple choice, and it's not listed as all the answers, it do not exist there. Then it does not exist. Yep, exactly. So they will never have both of those answers, though. 
So don't think that they'll both be there. That would just be dumb. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of the definition of an infinite limit. So you're saying as you go from the right and left, we go up to infinity or down to negative infinity. You could also talk about limits from the right and the left. So if I do a rough sketch of this, if I have 4 over x minus 2, I know my vertical asymptote is at 2, right? Vertical asymptote x equals 2. And then if you need to do a really quick little t-table to figure out what it's doing, you can. Some of you might know that it looks like 1 over x because all it is is it's shifted right to and there's a vertical stretch by 4. If you don't know that, then just do the quick t-table. So you can say, okay, I'm going to plug in 1 and I'm going to plug in 3. When I plug in 1, I get 4 over 1 minus 2. So 4 over negative 1 is negative 4. When I plug in 3, I get 4. So I have 3 comma 4 and I have 1 comma negative 4. Do you guys know the horizontal asymptote? Zero, yeah. So it's looking like this. So then we would be able to answer this question. So we can say the limit as x goes to 2. What do we put? Infinity, negative infinity, does not exist? Does not exist because 2 means both from both the right and the left. But if I had 2 plus, right, that's only from the right, that would be right here. That's going to be infinity, exactly, which could also be on the test, does not exist. Very annoying. All right, and then 2 from the left, negative infinity. All right, and then this one is drawing a picture. Did I go too fast? All right, so when you are sketching a function and just using limits, you want to just draw like little arrows to kind of indicate where you're at. So kind of follow along with me. So this first one says the limit as x goes to 3 from the right. So 3 from the right side is going to get closer and closer to infinity. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow on the right side of that asymptote. Make sense? And then I said as I get closer to negative 2, I go to negative infinity. Now that didn't say right or left, so I'm going to put both of them going down. And then I said 3 from the left, I go to negative infinity. So that's there. Now I say the limit as x goes to infinity. That's always like a horizontal asymptote, right? x goes to infinity. So I'm going to be along the line y equals 3. Now, does it matter if you put it on the top or the bottom of that horizontal asymptote? It doesn't. Like, it could be down here, and you could have something that crosses and goes back. Those are weird, though, and very rare. So I'm going to put them here. And I connected it. And then the limit as I go to negative infinity is 3 as well. So I'm going to connect these, this one. So the last step is, in the middle, I have these two arrows. I would probably, like, connect those as well. So I'm just going to connect right here in the middle. All right, so really quickly, knowing the shape of the graph can help you a lot. Like, if you knew that the last one, shh, I'm like shushing the people in the hallway. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so I knew that this was in the shape of 1 over x, so if I had along the vertical asymptote, that's one where they go in opposite directions. I would know right away it does not exist. You don't have to always draw it. If you know the shapes, then you don't have to draw it. Okay? We'll skip those last two. All right, let me pass out your homework. Sorry, I had to go to the very end.